Welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. And our guest, Dimitri, you're going to have to help me. Dimitri. Mubengo Mujanis. Mubengo. Mubengo. It's Mubengo. Mujanis. Explain to me Mubengo. Where it's a Greek Mubengo name. Come? No, no, actually, actually it's <laughs> Mubengis a... Mujanis is a Greek <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah. It's actually, for, it's a, uh, was given to me when I went through a, a, a boga uh, initiation in Gabon, West Africa. So. Well, we're going to talk more about that. Okay. You were with us before on this show, and we talked about Ibogaine, and that's one of our most popular uh, programs on YouTube. Yeah. It's a very popular program. So welcome program. back. Thank so you. welcome back. <laughs> And uh, Louis Jones. Louis, Louis Jones. Jones. <laughs> oh, it's a tough Local movie. New York Users Union. And you're, you can see it behind us right here, I guess. And uh, you're the director and uh, the organizer. I'm one of the organizing members, coordinator. Yes. Organizing members. Okay, Louis, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be talking about your group vocal okay. uh, tonight on the program. And of course, Ms. Joan Marie Moussi. And let's get right to it because I think we have a fascinating show in store for us tonight. Um, Dimitri. Tell us a little bit about what you've been up to since you were last on this show about a year ago. Well, in terms of the Ibogaine, um, I'm still providing Ibogaine treatments, which is a, um, it's a, a treatment for, a, a, for dependency on, uh, on opiates, cocaine, and heroin. Um, it uh, comes from, initially comes from Gabon, West Africa. It's a an hallucinogen, and it gets people off of, um, off of uh, actually it's a detox. Mm -hmm. But it's also part of a religion called Bwiti, and I've been to Gabon twice. I was initiated, given the name Mubengo, in, um, in Gabon by, mm -hmm. uh, by Bwiti. And uh -huh. then I've been working with Louis on, uh, and several other people on uh, Vocal, which is the um, New York Drug Users, or Users Union. And Louis Jones, tell us a little bit about the users union because obviously now we're talking about you know in case the viewers don't get it we're talking about addiction and we're talking about folks who are using needle drugs who are injecting uh, drugs. Well Vocal is a membership led organization you know uh, comprised of drug users those who identify with drug users as well as our allies and we're uh, part of the users movement you know organized around um, education, information, mm -hmm. you know, prevention, intervention, and treatment, you know, for HIV and hepatitis C, because disproportionately drug users, especially injection drug users, are infected, you know, mm -hmm. by hepatitis C, by 85 percent of, you know, cases of hep C among uh, injecting drug users, IDUs. Right. So and when you say that the membership is drug users and then people who are are allies. allies and yeah. those who so identify when, when with you drug say users. allies and people who identify, does that mean like family members? Family members, um, people, people who love drug or? users, you know, and people who work as advocates. And former drug users. And former oh, drug users, people also, may be in recovery. Right. Um, we're harm reduction based primarily, you know, we so embrace the principles of harm reduction. So your focus is to get people off of drugs? No. It's, it's to, to advocate for people who It's for the human using. rights, you know, of drug users around issues in terms of housing you know, um, health care, right, access to Hep C yeah. and HIV treatment, you know, and as well as... Um, as, well as, the prison, as well as what's going on with the prison industrial complex and how it's been used um, as a tool, really, I mean, sort of like laid the framework for like the many wars that are going on right now around the world. Uh, before, uh, you know, they came looking for South Asians and, and Muslims, uh, they came looking for drug users and they, they villainized drug users and many of the... Um, rollbacks and civil rights and human rights and, and uh, privacy laws and all the things that were gained, uh, the, the small gains but significant gains in the 60s have been rolled back uh, with the so-called war on drugs and now we have uh, more pr people in prison in the United States for non violent drug offenses than all the people in prison in Western Europe. It's one of our campaigns, as a matter of fact, you know, I mean, um, we're a small group, most of us have been unfortunately incarcerated, you know, um, and one of our campaigns is around um, repealing the Rockefeller drug laws. Mm -hmm. So now the stereotype of an IV drug user is not generally somebody who's motivated in this way, so how do you inspire people to become members and to work in an advocacy role. See, that's the misperception, you know what I mean, that drug users are lazy and, you know, inactive. Consumed and You know, we are organized. If we manage, you know, we believe we're the silent majority. Uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of people that are on either illicit or illicit drugs or prescription drug use, you know, and the average drug user could perhaps be a middle-class white woman, you know, a um, uh, wife. You know, I mean, who's on Xanax or, or Valium? Well, they you know, had a so whole show on Oprah where they had confessions, and one of the most common confessions was that the wife was secretly a drug addict. It what? was really interesting. Or on speed or some type of mm -hmm. diet pill or something like that. However, they got started. Right. Then. Mm -hmm. 
and look, we, we, we recognize that, that uh, there's a pro there's, that some folks use drugs problematically, okay? But we also have to realize that most people don't. Most people have a glass of wine, a couple glasses of wine. So you're saying like a functional drug user? Yes, yeah, a yeah, functional that's drug a, user. That's and, a saying, and we're not, right. And we're also we're recognizing, we're rec there's managed use, managed and use. we're recognizing that although although this is a, a, it's a civil right to take and a human right to consume whatever you want. We're recognizing the way that drugs have been played out in this culture, which has been ba basically along, along gender and class and, class and race. Mm -hmm. And that, the big one emphasis on race. And uh, we realize that, but we also say to those folks, those communities that have been devastated by the influx and maybe, maybe even the deliberate influx of drugs, that this war doesn't work. That it's not working for their communities and it's not working for any communities. It's, working, it's not even working for these communities upstate, the poor white communities that are, are, are involved in the prison well, industrial complex. Prison because that's there. a dead end place for those folks to be, for poor white folks upstate to be going to jail every day, garden like, mm -hmm. to, you know, and, and we're, we're talking about really an issue of, uh, that, that comes close to slavery, if not slavery. All right. We're advocating for alternatives to incarceration, you know, that there be more treatment and educational mm -hmm. and job training programs, which are more productive in terms of individuals going through, you mm -hmm. know, our process, you know, right. and we want to see more discre uh, judge discretionary, you know, rights, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of deciding on an individual basis of justice mm -hmm. instead of having a minimum, what do you mean in terms mandatory of minimums. Right. Yeah. You know, a person uh, can maybe first time offense for a very small amount of drugs do eight to 20 years. Right, you know, with the um, Rockefeller drug laws. Exactly. We're hoping Governor Patterson has promised. He's, he's thirty-five been, years in the books. I'm told that Governor Patterson has actually been arrested protesting the yes, Rockefeller drug laws. Yes, he has been laws. someone that's been the only person primarily right. outspoken politically yeah. in terms of seeing some change. But as Keith Wright said, even he won't do anything if there is a pressure. Yeah, we have to put out pressure. Yeah, and we right, have to say he has before, other actually. issues yeah. that he has to deal with, uh, and this might not be the most major issue right at the beginning. And all the prosecutors, which is I thought was the most interesting aspect of that pr uh, presentation we went to at City College the other day, mm -hmm. we both met at, mm -hmm. in which we heard uh, Keith Wright, the assemblyman, and other assembly members talk about uh, their struggle to overturn the Rockefeller drug mm -hmm. laws and how difficult it has been to fight against all the state prosecutors who want this tool to force confessions out of people mm -hmm. and to force people to cooperate and to snitch. We, we, there's, there's been a machine that has been built up around this war and it's a preemptive war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just yeah. the same, you know, right. it's the same story again. And this machine is really hard to break. There's people's jobs are on the line. But there have been communities destroyed, children taken away from parents, um, educational Orphans, grants taken, right. orphan educational mm -hmm. grants taken away, Fantasy basic things. civil mm -hmm. liberties and civil in human rights beyond civil liberties. And I, it's just a failed war. Now, what I, if somebody's I just want to mention our phone oh, sure. number. By the way, we are here live with uh, Dimitri Mubongo Muganis. <laughs> and Louis, Louis thank Jones. you very much, Louis, Louis Jones. Jones. The easy name. Yes, and uh, we are here live, and they're, of course, with Vocal New York, the Users Union, which you can see the logo above us on their mm -hmm. webpage, and we'll give you the webpage and that information in a moment. But we are here live. That's our phone number on the screen, 212-757-1538. Uh, uh, so if you're a user, up. if you have an issue concerning uh, drug use or uh, the laws concerning drugs or any of the things we're talking about here tonight, Ibogaine and others, give us a call. We'll take your call. We'll do our best to, to, uh, to feel it. But go ahead. I just want to hear, Louis. Yeah, we're all located, you know, in, in Brooklyn. We're Brooklyn based, but we're citywide. Oh, good, good. You know, and we're located between uh, on 4th Avenue, 84th Avenue, between uh, Bergen and St. Mark's in Brooklyn. And so most trains stop at the Atlantic Pacific stop. And do you meet like And we meet regularly. We have membership meetings, which are every last Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. We have every Thursday um, the only support group for hepatitis C drug users. All are welcome or user friendly. Um, anyone can come into the group. We have refreshments and transportation assistance for anybody who comes oh, to the group. Nice. That's every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We have a, a mobile unit that shows up on Tuesdays mm -hmm. between 1030 and, and 230 that provides um, HIV testing, hepatitis C testing, A and B vaccinations, you know, and this is started by users. Mm -hmm. We are a drug user organization of and, for, and by yeah, drug users to say that we are productive, responsible, and concerned members of society. And our phone number is? And our phone number is uh, area code 718-802-9540. And we'll, we work with NICAN, which is New York AIDS Housing. You can right. go to NICAN.org. And what is that? Uh, that the New York City out. AIDS Housing Network is our sponsoring organization. NYC. AHN. NYCAHN.org. And we have a call coming in, I think. Let's give it a try. We did. I guess they, they oh, gave the calls back. Calls back. We'll oh, take there the call. Oh, there they are. Okay. And you're on. Go ahead. Hello? Speak up. Hello, hello. 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 Yes, oh, I hear somebody. 
Hi there. How you doing? Hi. So, do you have a what question? Are you talking about? We can hear you. Do you have a question? What are you talking about? We're talking about Vocal New York. Huh? Vocal New York uses union. Drug uses union. Oh. Um. Do you have a question? Yes. Um. Where, where are y'all located? Where are we located? We are located on um, 4th Avenue, um, 84th Avenue in Brooklyn, between okay. St. Mark's and, and Bergen Street in Brooklyn. Uh, mm -hmm. Most trains, the BMT lines and the yeah, RT lines stop at Atlantic and Pacific in Brooklyn. Um, we're citywide though in our in our outreach. We go to many syringe well, programs. Call Let's take the other call. We still have it. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. How you guys doing? How, how are you doing? doing? Could you please tell me the um, the phone number again slowly? And do you have a website? Yes, we and do. And what's your name? I'm sorry. Your My name, name is Louis Jones. Hey. And this is Dimitri Mubengo Eugenis. Yes. And our number is 718-802-9540. Say that again slowly. 718-802-9540. Thank you. And the website, if you have one? And the website is NICAN, NICAN, dot org. Thanks a lot. That's great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for calling. You asked about organizing and how difficult it was. We, there was an historic... First of all, let me just say that the idea of, of uh, drug users un being united and politically active might seem strange new. to Americans, right. but there's a long tradition of it. The harm reduction movement, the needle exchange movement, was primarily Started drug by. addicts. Yeah. Uh, uh, using drug addicts who put this together and dropped the rate of infection from fi over 53% of HIV infection for drug, IV drug users to, I think, around 12% now. And that was done by drug users. And there's, and there's a history of this in Europe uh, with the junkie boon in, in, in yeah. Holland, which is also had ties Going to back I 20 years even. 20, 20 you know, 25 because years. Because of the stigma and marginalization to this day and of what drug users. There was what's, a, what's the history of how, uh, of how uh, Vocal got started? Four years ago this month, April, we started oh, actually. 2004, yes, yeah, right. anniversary month. How did it come? You know, what was, what it came about it? through... Um, Director of the Positive Health Project, you know, took Jason the initiative. Farrell. Jason Farrell took the initiative. He himself uh, identifies with drug users mm -hmm. and had one of the first, you know, um, founded by a drug user um, syringe exchange programs in mm -hmm. Midtown Manhattan. That's needle exchange. Needle right? exchange, yes. Where you can take your old needles and get new ones, right? Because despite the so laws that say it's use. illegal. To well, that's well, we an issue that we're, we're addressing right. as we well. Address that. The yes. federal ban on, you know, uh, syringe exchange programs receiving federal funding because um, of the needles. Well, right. <coughs> Excuse me. So then he... Uh, and then he had uh, contacted me and gave me an opportunity, you know, to um, organize drug users around hepatitis C because there were a lot of issues in terms of drug users accessing treatment. Mm -hmm. There were some um, laws on the books, you know, I mean, that was unethical in terms of medical treatment being provided right. for drug users who had to be six months abstinence. Mm -hmm. You know, and for a drug user, that might never happen, so therefore so treatment might never happen. Yeah. Right. And so we wanted to organize to change those laws by having a committee. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we were called the uh, IDU Hep C Advocacy Committee, mm -hmm. you know, a big name, before we actually formulated and realized we right. need to organize What does IDU more. means? Intravenous, intravenous drug, drug, drug user. Intravenous right. needle drug user. Right. Okay. Injecting drug. Most of us are primarily intraven uh, in intravenous drug users and we're Hep C positive. I myself am a person who with AIDS for 20 years. I tested positive in 1986. I've been Hep C positive since 1999. You know, I've undergone Hep C treatment, but it wouldn't have been accessible to me had we not advocated, had it not been good advocates, had we not shown up ourselves as drug users mm -hmm. saying, we're not in recovery, we're drug users. You know, and we have a right to treatment, you mm -hmm. know, and access to treatment. Yeah. So we would show up at these committees and at these meetings and speak on our own, in our own yeah, voice. So and therefore our voice, vocal, became our name. Oh, the okay. funny thing about the hep, well, the funny thing, it's not funny at all, but the hepatitis C is, my understanding of it, is there's no, there's no evidence. There's no, you know, that you talk about with, with, with uh, medical Medical professionals are always talking about evidence-based. There's no evidence that people who have who are actively drug have active drug users and get treatment get what they call um, contraindicated. Yeah, that, that it's contraindicated. Mm -hmm. that, they, that they don't do well. There's just no evidence. It's just prejudiced. And what Bias, and, and, right? and, and, and related to that issue, related to the issue of of, of needle exchange, Vocal, um, along with uh, NICAN and uh, Citywide and a few other um, harm reduction organizations, but primarily Vocal and. Um, we, there was a historic uh, event happened about two weeks ago where there were 50 active drug users. Mm -hmm. We got on a bus, went to Albany. We sat in the offices with active drug mm -hmm. users, the, the, the mm -hmm. offices of the legislators up the uh, Albany, and we, we lobbied for two bills. One bill surrounding the, um, the inconsistency in the uh, syringe uh, laws. The city mm -hmm. pays for syringe, the state pays for syringes, and the city cops arrest you for having this right. state-issued syringes. And the, the discrepancy. Hatch 22 right. right there, and it's ultimate. And the, and the, other, other, the other bill that we were talking about is called the Good Samaritan 
narrative, Bill. And that's that's around um, uh, the fact that folks who are go, overdosing, they you're afraid to call because if you call someone and someone's dying in your apartment, the, the cops will come and start mm. bust will bust your ass for having something in your pocket. So this would give mm. immunity, mm. not from an ongoing investigation or even warrants, unfortunately, but, but immediate, would, arrest. But immediate mm. arrest for possession. And I also got to say the drug policy alliance helped us with that too. Yes. If that was historic. That was done by drug users. We were in the we were we were. I mean, it was a beautiful site. We had active <laughs> drug users from Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Manhattan mm -hmm. sitting in the office with upstate legislators, like, like 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 Republican crackers, basically. Right. And it was like a beautiful, beautiful day just to be in the <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, and people so, getting together and and, and they and, did it. We and, did it, man. I was a beautiful day. Organizing, we can show up and make that kind of difference. Right. We're doing the same thing, you know, in terms of um, harm reduction among the homeless. Mm -hmm. We're able to meet with over a, a year or so of corresponding with public officials from the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and Department of Homeless Services. You know, let them know that, you know, we understand a report that came out in 2005 um, indicated that the number one cause of death among the homeless, you know, was substance use. Mm -hmm. You know, not exposure or TB, you know, even AIDS, you know, uh -huh. but substance use was the number one cause of death, you right. know, uh, among the homeless and sure. single adults. And we wanted to see something done that was harm reduction mm -hmm. based. Because at, the, at that point, at this point, syringe, you know, exchange programs don't have access to shelters. Mm -hmm. The shelter yeah. residents can't have access to their syringes because it's contraband and it's illegal. Right. But yes. there's been a willingness now uh -huh. with the Department of Homeless yeah. Services and the um, Department of Mental Health and Mental Hygiene because of the coordinators there and the, and the public officials willing to work with us uh -huh. who are collaborating and changing policy for protocol changes uh -huh. to have uh, overdose prevention in the shelter systems in New York City mm -hmm. and also make syringe exchange access available. Uh -huh. You know, um, to the shelter residents. Mm -hmm. So this is a president's. Side. Yes, this is a, a revolutionary thing that's wow. to happen, and it's this year. So the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, you know, seems favorable in terms of harm reduction. That's amazing. But then we, as uh, Dimitri said, you know, we have this contradiction with, um, you know, the federal ban. Mm -hmm. You know, on That's syringes that they won't pay for it. It's banned. Well, do you right. have? Uh, is there any possibility is that that law is not going to change anytime soon at the federal level? I mean, is there any possibility, even if there's a change in the White House? And we don't know. I haven't gotten any of the. There reports. are police that want to see it changed because yeah. <laughs> there's so much confusion because uh -huh. they see a lot of individuals in exchange programs with their cards. You know, who are legitimately in a you know program. You know, getting the assistance that they need, the support that they need. You know, um, getting what will keep them safe and the community safe and their family safe. You know, getting arrested. Get you know, I just, oh, you know. I think we have a call, I'm told. No, nah, they left. They left, they'll come we'll back. Call back. Oh, yeah. Call, call, tap the mouse while you're over there. <laughs> get the back call back. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> hi, you're on. Join us. Hello? Welcome. Hello? You have a question? Well, not really. I just want to say, um, if... Oops. Hello? Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, yes. we got you. Sorry. Yeah, I'm switching channels and I, by accident, bump into this channel. And it's great that you're talking about these things and it's... Sister, we can't hear you. Hang on, huh? Sounds good, whatever you're trying yeah. to say. <laughs> hey, try again. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Hello? we yes. can hear you. It's Just keep talking. Show. We can hear you. The, the listeners can hear you. Okay, it's a good show. I'm listening to it. I've been there, done that about drugs, and I'm at um, hepatitis C, and it should be more shows like this about drugs and the youth mm -hmm. services. So I just want to say a good job you're doing, and it should be more vocal because it's very important. That's, thank you. That's the name of the organization. Come and come and join us. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Why thank you. Give right. out the information Get again in about yes, where. Yes, again, we're, we're at. Very much that. Yes, again, we're at 80 A Fourth Avenue in Brooklyn between St. Marks and Bergen. Um, the stop for most BMT and uh, IRT trains is the Atlantic uh, Pacific stop. Mm -hmm. And again, we're taking your calls. We're here live. 212-757-1538. Dimitri Mubango Muganis. Excellent. 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 Yeah. 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 That was and great. Louis Jones. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> right. And they're Good from New York, New, York, New York Users Union, and we're talking about uh, alternative ways and humanitarian ways yes. of approaching uh, uh, folks who, uh, for one reason or another, have uh, gotten into the illness of drug addiction, and it, we're calling it an illness, although yeah. society right now likes to call it a crime. There are some cracks in the wall of this illness being more and more seen as an illness and less seen as a crime, but the Rockefeller drug laws here yeah. in New York State... The which, harshest in the country. The har and with the pattern for all the ones that are, yeah. all the new war on drug Reagan era, harsh drug, just say no laws, all 
based on the Rockefeller drug laws here in New York, I, which on one hand, which I find fascinating because you're just talking, on one mm -hmm. hand, New York State can be so advanced in mm -hmm. the social services sector, going farther than any other Very state. Very progressive in many right. ways. But on the and other hand, can barbaric in these laws. Let's, let's face you know, it, guys. Very strange um, uh, Let's thing. face it. We're, we are going further and further away from New York City being that, that, that mecca of, 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 lef of leftist uh, 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 enlightenment. We are getting mm. closer and closer. Yeah, well, <laughs> listen, man, there was a time in the 40s and the 50s and the 30s where we had people on city council. I mean, there's still some good folks on city council, but we had people who were really in favor of tenants' rights and working people, and it's gotten further and further away from that. This is mm. the worst place to be for some folks in terms of in terms of the arrest for marijuana, which yeah. is ba they're basically, look, a lot of people mm. are out there smoking right. weed, and a lot of you got really good jobs, <laughs> but the people who are going to jail are the same people. It's the oops right. factor. Oops, it's a bunch of African-American well, and Latino they, men. I mean, how the hell did that happen? Always, it's always well, the same mistake. you out of a housing project mm. if you're smoking pot, so which you're is, forced to go into the street, mm. while a person who's paying rent in a regular apartment where they don't have, like, a rule that says you can be thrown out if you're smoking marijuana somebody mm -hmm. smells it next door that's right right you know that's a big difference in housing projects you can be thrown out in the street with your well, own this is house. another issue this right. is another something issue. that somebody who can afford rent or owns their own place mm -hmm. can easily do this is this is another in issue because home, the, the drug the drug laws and the way drugs are handled hit every every facet of our lives. Whether That's you right. use drugs or not, there's someone in your family and your neighborhood who is using drugs right now. And it's being used as a tool for gentrification. Mm -hmm. They roll on the block, some kids are selling dime bags, maybe they're selling dope, maybe they're selling rocks, whatever mm -hmm. they're selling, and they start moving them out. And the neighborhoods, the neighbors go, oh, it's great, they're moving those kids out. They're your kids. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you're going out, the property value is going up, and it's all about cleaning up this idea of, of uh, what's a quality of life issue. But the, we are citizens as well. Mm -hmm. And what about the quality of our life? And when you take away our rights and take away our humanity, your, your humanity goes with it. And that's, yeah. and, and that's the way it's played out. One thing I want to say, and I don't think <coughs> we have enough time here, the whole idea of illness. There's some folks that have a problem with drugs. I don't know if I buy the disease model or not. I but we don't. can't. I don't buy the disease model. Let me mm. just say that. And I, I, okay, I, tell me what model you buy. I, I, think, I, think, I think it's, can yeah. be, it, can be, it can be recreational. It can be um, social, social right. and it can be problematic, mm -hmm. and it can be medication. It can, be medication. It can right. be medication, and then it can be a health issue. Well, let me but be the devil's advocate. That. There's, okay. You talked earlier yourself about the the impact on families mm -hmm. and communities mm -hmm. of drug use. In other words, somebody is forced to do a compulsive type of behavior by mm -hmm. their use of drugs. And are driven so pathologically because yeah. of the laws and the right. policies, you know, of okay. drug prohibition. You know, how much does that contribute to people's behavior and the way that people have to function and act because well, drugs are prohibited, you know, in this country? I think that it's that most people, when they think about drug addiction, think about only one cause for it, which is some kind of character weakness. Mm. But in talking to different people, like we had one man on the show that was a, told us the history of his addiction and it all started when he got in a car accident so at the age the of 16. And he had been given prescription drugs mm -hmm. and then had turned eventually to getting his own and self-medicating when the doctor's medical thing didn't really work out. And I thought that that was probably surprising to a lot of people that someone's road to addiction wasn't beer, yes, marijuana, and out and, on and the I don't consider myself an addict, but I'm a, I identify as a drug user. I'm a person who practices harm reduction, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I've been through treatment. I've been through rehabs. I've been incarcerated. I've been through religious conversion. Um, I've done everything but stand on my head. You know what I mean? I think I might have tried that too. You know. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I find that, you know, um, harm reduction is sensible. You know, it's a, it's a set of principles and strategies that help you from chaotic use to managed use to even abstinence in some cases. Right, and then deciding you, know? you might not right. want to do right. it. Right, and making choices, you know what I mean, and how to make choices and think through, you know, um, the stages of change. Right. By the way, we are here live uh, with Dimitri Mubongo Muganis and uh, Louis Jones, and we're uh, talking <laughs> about vocal. vocal New York. We're very vocal, and we're talking about Vocal New York, yeah, all right. the New York That's City it. Users That's Union. It. And we're taking your calls here live, 212-757-1538. Number's right there on your screen. And this is Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo with Miss Joan Marie Moosey. We're here every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Can I just make a plug? Go ahead. Is it possible? Yes. Uh, Go right there's there's going to be a, um, a demonstration, the drug peace demonstration, which right. is part of the Million Marijuana March. It's um, starting in Tompkins Square Park on May 3rd at 11.45. And we're going to walk uh, to the United Nations to right. Dash Hamishal. I have a hard time with that. Plaza. Dog Hamishal. Dog Hamishal, which sounds like such an inviting right place. There. I got to find out. <laughs> Doc, how Michelle Mubengo Plaza? That's the name of the 
we're going to change it to. <laughs> we're going to be meeting there, uh, talking about uh, the, the, the insane drug wars, um, medical marijuana. Um, also, internationally, uh, we, we, just to make you really aware, there's a drug war going on in, in, uh, in Thailand right now. The last time Thailand declared a drug war, 2,500 drug users and people who they just said were drug users were summarily executed and disappeared. Mm -hmm. And this is not, this is in Thailand. This is where all, all you people go and like for the feel-good vacation. Right. They are brutalizing people and families in the name of drugs, sort of a, a, a carry through, a crossover of, of this war, which is a horrendous war here. So boycott Thailand and um, drug use so is May a human rights issue. It's a human so rights issue. going to have a contention at the march. We'll be at, we'll yes. be at the march as well. Yeah, May, May 3rd. May 3rd. May 3rd. And we'll be talking about And we'll about talk May 3rd. more about that. And again, Volcor is located on 80 4th Avenue between St. Mark's and Bergen, mm -hmm. you know, in Brooklyn. Okay. And our number is 718-802-9540. Okay. And your web page. 718-802-9540. your web page, which is behind us on the back, in the back of us right now, which uh, you can see is uh, Vocal New York Users Union. What's your address? It's 80. I'm sorry, your, uh, web, address, Avenue, your web address. Right I'm between St. Mark's and Bergen. And right. our web address is NYCAN, yes. N-Y-C-A-H-N.org. Okay, great. Uh, so we have a couple more minutes if folks want to call 212-757-1538. If there are any uh, users out there, anybody who has an opinion about whether drug use is social, political, or uh, health-related, or morality and ethically related, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have an uh, attitude about or uh, experience with the Rockefeller drug laws or needle exchange or hep C and AIDS, we're here to talk about those issues with our guests who are experts in all of them. Um, Dimitri, you mentioned earlier, we have a minute or two, your trip to Gabon in West Africa. Tell us a little bit. Can you spend a minute and just sum spend, up? Where, okay. is, where, is, where is Gabon? Gabon is in West Africa. It's on the, it's on the equatorial, it's equatorial West Africa on the coast. Um, what I did there is I was, I was a, a, a head of physical dependency on opiates for over 20 years, methadone, cocaine, and heroin. I ingested the sacrament of aboga. I went through a trip without withdrawal. I came off it. I haven't used those drugs since. I've used sacraments, peyote, ayahuasca, and aboga, and part of the, 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 um, the sacrament is called aboga. It's part of a very rich and beautiful tradition called Bwiti from Gabon, West Africa. I'm telling you, the antidote to dependency on these drugs is from Africa. Mm -hmm. And I was initiated uh, in, in the temple uh, with some beautiful people, Papa Andre, um, Titayo, Mama Lucy, Bisoko, all these beautiful people, my brothers and sisters in, in Gabon and my teachers. And I became Mubango, which I said is an interesting Greek name, but uh, you know. <laughs> Dimitri Mubango Maganas, <laughs> Louis Jones. Uh, thanks for joining us. and Thank uh, you for having us. Yes, yeah, yeah, so we're able to, to help. And, uh, wonderful. and we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Welcome to Thank Let's you. Talk. Vocal.